in Malawi, we have a problem whereby 50% of our adolescents will get pregnant in their adolescent years, and also 10% will become HIV positive by the age of 25. So we discovered that the problem is that they can't reach the clinic to access sexual and reproductive health services. Hello and welcome to Africa Science Focus, the show that keeps you up to date on innovation and development across Sub-Saharan Africa. Did you know that more than one-fifth of Malawi's population is between the ages of 10 and 19? Many of these young people are at risk or already struggling with poor sexual reproductive health. This week, our reporter Charles Pensilo goes in search of accessible sexual health services that are attempting to reduce the risk of unplanned pregnancy and sexually transmitted infection, including HIV AIDS. As technology is expanding and mobile phones are part of our day-to-day -day lives, we are increasingly accessing and interacting with information through mobile phones. Join me as I speak with experts on new inventions that are coming out of the Southern African nation of Malawi. Also, I'll speak to some of the people who have used the applications and what they make out of them. I am Abdullah Saidi. I'm uh, the supervisor for Chiparajaba Phone. Chiparajaba Phone is an M Health initiative that was started by, by, uh, by Village Rich Malawi. Basically, it started with the aim of uh, trying to address information gap that was existing within the Malawian population. We're having a lot of morbidities, most of which are preventable morbidities because people like information. So if we could have a platform where people are able to talk to qualified healthcare workers so they get the right information from them and then they'll be able to make an informed decision about their own health. It's a very interesting service in the sense that uh, one, the, the caller is in the comfort of their home. Mm. And then they are free, because there's no face-to-face -face interaction, they are free to express everything that concerns them about their reproduction. About on average 15 minutes, you can answer a lot of questions within that time, and we can at least rectify some of the myths and misconceptions that people have towards certain services that are on offer. Chipatala Chapafoni, CCPF, or Health Center by Phone, combines a 24-hour staffed health hotline with a mobile messaging service. It provides its clients with regular updates on reproductive, maternal, and newborn health topics that are tailored to the client's week of pregnancy or a child's age. Airtel. Africa's largest mobile carrier have agreed that calls to the hotline will be free for all users. What general uh, information or trends that that you've seen uh, on the people who use the platform? With regards to sexual reproductive, uh, the issue to do with HIV, mm. sexual 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 transmitted infection, the rate highly as well as contraception. The, the response has been so, so overwhelming for us. Um, when we're starting, we'd have maybe 7,000 calls in a year. As we speak, that figure is just for almost one month. A lot of people are calling, especially the young ones, are always in majority, 50 to 25 years. Those are the people who are always calling because they, they have we've generated interest amongst them, so they're able to call. So, as we speak, we we have a challenge now that we created a lot of demand and we are having a capacity problem in terms of human resource. We are need to meet the demand, so we are currently attempting to answer around ten percent of 
the total core volume that is coming through. So that's why we try to come up with another way of doing it so that some of the information can be uh, gotten by just listening to them. So we recorded certain messages so that the youth and everyone can listen to at their own choice. So some of these messages we've looked at most common asked questions and then we've recorded responses related to those questions. Malawi has one of the highest rates of maternal, child and infant mortality in the world. The global barriers to health care are exacerbated in Malawi, where 85% of individuals are poor and live in rural areas. It is hoped that CCPF will begin to address these challenges by improving the access to health information and services without increasing the number of visitors to health facilities. Esther and Memory both use CCPF and tell our reporter Charles what they think of the service. So she's saying that her name is Esther Banali. She lives in Palombe, which is a district in the southern Malawi. She believes that this is a very, very good platform because she was looking for information about the natural method of family planning. She has been asking herself a lot of questions about it. And she's saying that she was comfortable uh, when asking the questions. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been comfortable to ask the same questions to her mom uh, or, or who are around her. And she is also adding that she, she was able to understand the information. She's able to share or whatever she was advised with her peers at school. So she's saying that her name is Bemori Banali. Yeah, she is 20 years old and she happens to be the sister to uh, Esther Banali, who we spoke to earlier. She's now believing in his credibility because when she went to uh, the hospital some days later, she was told the same advice that she was given while uh, uh, on the platform or while calling the uh, or using the application so she's now able to believe that uh, these are uh, these people are really giving out credible information and they can she has a belief that they might help her uh, in the near future During the coronavirus pandemic, other similar services have also become available. Gloria Kasambwe is a researcher, data analyst, and executive director of Hope for Girls Education. The deadly virus has slowed operations and cancelled contracts or grants that are essential for supporting girls at risk of early pregnancy. In a time of crisis, she has developed My Life. Uh, my name is Gloria Gasamwe and I'm the developer of My Life App. My Life App is an application that tells more or that gives knowledge about sexual reproductive health and rights. Basically, this application was designed due to COVID because due to some restrictions that were imposed, a lot of people were unable to go to the hospital and access their services. Right. So maybe during the, the time that you've been operating uh, this application, what sort of trends in the information that uh, young people were accessing, did you notice or did you come across? What were young people looking for when they log on uh, onto the pa- platform? Okay, so I think uh, the first crucial information that we actually wanted to disseminate was about family planning methods. A lot of youths do not know that we are supposed to go to the hospital and access information on social reproductive health and rights. That includes what each and every method involves. So for instance, if a person chooses to say, okay, I'm going to use a condom, what exactly is it that a person is supposed to know about the condom? And if a person say, okay, we are going to use uh, this other mode, what does it require? What is exactly is involved on that one? So like, do you have... Uh do you have information just preloaded 
onto the application or, or you do have some, some personnel, like maybe health workers who assist? Okay, so there's information on the, uh, on the platform, but we, have, we are also working with health personnel, I think, yeah, who also sometimes try to explain to these people because most of the times, I just felt like it's wise to use also the health personnel, despite the fact that most of the youth failed to go to the hospital because of fear. They even failed to talk to these people because they feel like it's not important. Gloria Kasambwe, developer of My Life, speaking there. Although these online efforts are a proactive attempt to inform the public about sexual health, Dr. Precious McKee thinks that more needs to be done. I must say that the challenge is that uh, we might own, they are only selected to those who are in the urban and those who are exposed to the, the internet or who have smartphones. Because, for instance, uh, a, recent, a recent study showed that uh, about only 6% of the Malawian population have access to the Internet. So it means if an application is, is Internet-based, then, I'm, uh, then we are only uh, benefiting just 6% of the population. Although not all the population has access to a mobile phone, over 80% of the country receives mobile network coverage, the eighth highest in Africa. It is expected that there will be a strong push to increase user numbers and match the impressive coverage recovering the operator's investment in infrastructure. If successful, these mobile services can be expected to increase in popularity. That's it for today's show. But before we go, we have a question from listener Mario Chimalizeni. I'm calling from Blanta, Chumankunda, Malawi. This country, Africa, we have been registering low cases in the pandemic uh, than the Europe and the other parts of the world. So is it that African have developed immunity of a disease or is it the disease over? Uh, there could be so many reasons why Africa has reported the fewer cases. Uh, either we, we have not been testing uh, too much, maybe with the interactions uh, and, uh, and also, of course, the, the public health interventions that Africans have, uh, have uh, instituted uh, that may yield to, uh, uh, to that. But to come to the question, does it mean that uh, COVID-19 is over in Africa? I think that is too early to say at this stage. Uh, until perhaps uh, uh, there's a the, the, the bit more, more time that we experience. The burden, or rather the consequences of the, of the virus, uh, that's called true in Africa, is still likely to be of less impact as it has been in the Western, uh, in the Western uh, countries. Dr. Amos Nyaka answering Mario's question. Now, it is over to you. Do you have a question about development, science, or health in Africa? It can be literally anything. Send us a text and we'll have an expert answer it for you. Contact us via WhatsApp on plus 254-799-042-513. You can subscribe to our program, download episodes, and leave a review at www.sidev.net. Today's program was produced by Harrison Lewis. The editor was Jackie O'Para and the reporter was Charles Pensulo. I'm Sally Amutabi. See you next Wednesday. This program was funded by the European Journalism Centre through the European Development Journalism Grant Program with support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. <laughs>